Hello and welcome to this recorded e-learning on basic HDL coding techniques part one. My name is Frank Nelson. I'll be your instructor for this module. This module introduces the primary HDL coding techniques that most FPGA designers use for their design construction. This module introduces some of the primary concepts that impact the quality results a designer will get when synthesizing for a Xilinx FPGA. This module also provides some detailed recommendations about creating effective HDL that will provide high speed and save FPGA resources. This module requires that the designer already know how to code with VHDL and or Verilog. Many of the topics discussed include HDL code in either VHDL or Verilog language. We do not expect the user to know both languages, but most designers can create code as described in this module. If you are an experienced ASIC designer or new to FPGA design, this module will help you reduce your learning curve and get productive faster with your new FPGA design. This module will help you build good HDL code that will use minimal FPGA resources and get good performance. These practices are designed to promote fast and efficient FPGA designs. After completing this module, you will be able to specify FPGA resources that may need to be instantiated, identify some basic design guidelines that successful FPGA designers follow, and select a proper HDL coding style for fast, efficient circuits. Now, many new customers are disappointed that they're going to have to instantiate some of the most popular FPGA resources into their design. This is now pretty much standard operating procedure in the FPGA industry. What I mean by that is that most customers are prepared to create highly optimized cores with the Xilinx Core Generator or Xilinx Architecture Wizard Utilities and then instantiate those components into their HDL. This flow allows users to work around limitations all synthesis tools have with regards to automatically inferring the best FPGA resources. The bottom line is that all the high-end synthesis tools available for the FPGA industry usually do not allow inference of all the best FPGA resources. Usually the latest and greatest, like the DSP4080 slice or the block RAM resources. Now, synthesis tools may allow some inference of these resources. There are plenty of exceptions, but usually only primary applications are inferable. For example, the block RAM resources are inferable for memories that only use a single block RAM and are not initialized and don't use the output register. Simply put, it is too difficult for synthesis vendors to keep up with all the possible configurations of a single FPG resource and build the ability for users to infer all possible functionality. To aid customers in building a desired component of complete functionality, we recommend that users build these components with a core generator or architecture wizard, as I already mentioned. When I mention high-end synthesis tools, I'm referring to the most popular synthesis tools available for the FPGA industry, specifically Simplify and Xilinx's own XST, which most of our customers use. While this module is not about how to use these synthesis tools, it is important that users learn about proper use of their synthesis tools and their tools limitations, regardless of what synthesis tool you're using. Xilinx provides some basic information about synthesis options in the Design for Performance course commonly called DFP. Now this module will discuss in detail proper HDL coding techniques for the most common and fundamental components designers make. To get optimum speed, device utilization, and minimal power, customers need to plan on targeting as much of the FPG's dedicated hardware resources as possible. This means that users not only have to plan on instantiating the proper resources, but sometimes have to look for creative ways in which to use the dedicated resources. For example, most customers would think to build a FIFO with the block RAM, but most would not consider building a finite state machine with block RAM. Very often, customers choose a device that has some dedicated resources left over. So to get the most out of the FPGA, users have to very often pack the most into the FPGA, in particular, those dedicated hardware resources they weren't using. Writing good HDL is, of course, important because it is used by synthesis tools to infer the most popular FPGA resources, that is, LUTs and registers. Since there is very often more than one way to code for effectively the same functionality, it is important to understand the differences between two different or more ways to code a function. 
This is compounded by the fact that often a poorly coded piece of logic creates a timing-critical path for a designer to resolve later on, and often designers waste a great deal of time resynthesizing and repeating a place and route solution, hoping to meet a timing objective. Another very common FPG design practice is for a designer to pipeline a timing-critical path. Now this is done by inferring extra registers on a long data path so a long net delay or multiple LUTs in series can be tolerated. If you are not familiar with pipelining, don't worry, we'll talk a bit more about this later on. Finally, to improve the speed of the output netlist made by your synthesis tool, it is important that you're, you take proper advantage of the synthesis options available to you provided by your synthesis tool. Now we'll talk more about this in the Design for Performance course as I mentioned earlier, but we wanted to mention some of our general recommendations for driving your synthesis tool here. This slide is trying to highlight some of the benefits of the dedicated hardware resources that exist in the newest FPGAs. The most useful of the dedicated hardware resources is the DSP slice and the block RAM resources. Besides using less power and saving primary FPGA resources, that is, LUTs and registers, using the dedicated resources makes it easier to estimate timing. This is because the architectural delays of the dedicated resources are known before place and route. Unlike data paths that may contain multiple LUTs and nets in series, data paths that use the dedicated resources do not require any programmable routing delays, except to route to and from the dedicated resource. Another reason to use the dedicated resources is that compared to soft implementations, now that means a LUT and a register implementation of the same component, but compared to that, the speed of the dedicated hardware is significantly faster than, shall we say, a soft implementation. So be sure to use as much of the dedicated hardware resources as your design needs, and if you think you may be running out of primary FPG resources, consider implementing more of your design in leftover dedicated hardware resources. Now this slide describes the timing closure flow for Xilinx FPGAs. You may recall this slide from the Essentials of FPGA Design course. Now timing closure is introduced in Essentials but is a primary topic in the Design for Performance course. What I wanted to point out to you now is that the most important efforts to improve design speed are recommended very early in the design flow. Even before completing a single implementation that is a place and route of the design, it's a very important idea for you to consider upfront to encode your design in any special way to get good timing results. So making the good coding decisions early is critical and is most beneficial when good coding styles are used from the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, most designs will require at least some instantiation of dedicated hardware resources. This is because all synthesis tools have limitations on their ability to infer all of the FPG resources. Now this is especially common when the dedicated hardware has as much flexibility to be used in so many applications. So for example, the DSP slice can be used for multipliers, large muxes, MAC functions, filters, ALUs, etc. So it's a very flexible component and of course that can be challenging to infer all that functionality. While we recommend inference, if possible, when you instantiate components, try to place the instantiations in one location, usually at the top level of your design. This will make it easier to port your code to another device family or technology later on while reusing as much of your generic HDL as possible. We also recommend using the core generator and, as I mentioned, the architecture wizard to create your optimized components. These utilities are a standard part of the ISE tools and, of course, are included with the toolkit. 